Hi students, welcome back. Let's continue with the dynamic scheduling. So in this video, I am going to explain one of the dynamic scheduling technique that is the Thom's Law's algorithm. So in this video, I'll explain the introduction part of the Thomas Law's algorithm. In the next video, I'll take an example that is a famous example, whatever it is there in your textbook. I'll explain within clear cut. Okay, so now let's start with the concept. Thom's Law algorithm. So it is a method. The first point is it is a method of implementing it is a method of implementing dynamic scheduling dynamic scheduling so this is a point you have to remember that it is a method of implementing the dynamic scheduling and it is invented by it is invented by robot Tom's law. So that's why the it came. Uh, this algorithm is called as a Tom's law's algorithm. So it is invented by the Robert Thomas law. So it exactly is, uh, what it, it is going to do. It removes. It is going to remove name dependency. First thing is it is going to remove the name dependency through register renaming. Through register renaming okay and it also tracks it tracks operand available it tracks when operands are available when operands are available to satisfy the data dependency to satisfy the data dependency okay so these are the main points that you have to be remember that it is a method for implementing the dynamic scheduling and it is helpful in renaming the data dependency to register renaming uh, but to avoid the hazards okay so and it tracks when operands are available to satisfy the data dependencies Okay, and it also differs from the scoreboarding in that it uses the register renaming and to eliminate the output and anti dependencies that is right after right hazard and right after read hazards. Okay, so now let's see this diagram. This is a Tom's Law algorithm. The flow it is a I said it is a method of implementing the dynamic scheduling. So it is a hardware approach. So in this hardware approach, so first from instruction unit from instruction unit let's take some instructions so like addition multiplication load some instructions or their load uh, load uh, something like f8 comma f10 something like so from instruction unit the floating point operand i'm talking about operand queue this is an operand queue not an operation operand queues okay so here the instructions are placed one after the another addition multiplication load all these things are placed and this is a floating point registers here it is there so which are used to hold the functional unit uh, values functional unit registers and this store buffers to store the data and this is a load buffers getting the data from memory okay from the uh, fp opq also you can load the data okay load the data from the memory and here a three adders and two multipliers are there three adders and two multipliers three adder and the two multiplier that is a uh, floating point adders and the floating point multipliers so here three floating point adders and two floating point multipliers units are there and these are the reservation stations add a 1 add a 2 add a 3 and multiply 1 multiply 2 these are the reservation stations okay floating point multiply reservation state and floating point add a reservation station and whatever this red color it is because a common data bus this is a common data bus and this is a normal bus whatever you are seeing the data from one uh, unit to another unit the data will be passing through normal bus and whatever the red lines these are there this is a common data bus so the data that has to be modified or placed in the common database that can be accessed by any device any adder any multiplier or any store or any load anything can be taken okay so data will be taken from the floating point operand queue 
and that will be issued that will be issue issue to the adders okay that will be issued to the adders as well as that will be issued to the multipliers that will be issued to the multipliers this is one and this is one and this is one okay issue the data to the adders as well as the multipliers from the functional unit from a, from the functional unit to the queue from the queue to the adder and the multiplier will be issued okay so the register f1 f2 will be operands here the operands are storing not the operator operands okay and this is the operands f6 and f8 are the operands and these values will be sent to the adders here dispatch right back okay so here we are dispatching the values to the adders so now the adder is going to perform the operation it is write back the result to the common data bus so here is also this reservation station holds the operands and whenever these two operands are available f6 and f8 operands are available that will be sent to the floating point multiplier now the multiplier is write back the result to the common data bus write back the result to the common data bus so that data will be going back to store the data and also it plays in the fp register floating point register okay so that again it sends the data to the multipliers and adders whenever it requires it takes the data and then modifies because data dependencies will be there so whenever the data dependencies are there the data will be sent to the common data bus and that again sends to the floating point register whenever the data operation is over it stores into the store buffers and it will send back to the memory if there is no dependencies are there it get, it executes and stores into the memory and if dependencies are there it will be stored in the flow floating point registers again that will be sent to the adders and the multipliers so this is what the operation is going on in the tom's loss algorithm okay so in this video i just want to give some uh, terms okay and these terms are i'm going to use in the uh, example so the reservation station components here we are using op is nothing but the operation to performed in the unit like example like uh, addition subtraction okay operation uh, sorry operation to be performed op code and qj Q, qk or the reservation stations producing source registers okay qj qk or the reservation state stations we are talking about the reservation stations which holds the source registers only the source registers will be storing on the reservation stations that is value to be written value to be written it's not written value to be written and vj vk values of the source operand so here the values are already written that is value of source operand will be stored on vj and vk and qj qk or the reservation state and producing source registers so in this source register value has to be written so it has to be in waiting state source register reservation station qj qk waiting state okay it is waiting for value has to be written in the source register so value of source operand rj rk are the flags indicating when vj vk are ready whenever these two are ready rj rk flags will be indicated and busy indicates reservation station and functional unit is both are busy okay and there are three stages in the tom's loss algorithm student you have to remember these three stages one is issue execution and write so first it is issuing the instruction get instruction from from uh, floating point opq if reservation station is free suppose if the reservation station is free no structural hazards are there the scoreboard issues instructions send operands renaming the registers okay after issue is over then execution operate on operands execution is going to perform an operands because operands are holding the values we are performing the operation on the values okay when both operands are ready whenever the both operands that is the values register contains the values if those two values are ready then execute suppose if not ready if they are not ready watch cdb for result that means common data bus you have to wait for the common data bus for result because whenever this uh, data is stored on uh, sent to common data bus it is again sent back to this here and again the data will be sent to the uh, the register so that the other instructions will use these data 
from the functional point register takes the data and from here it takes the that data and both will be performed again send okay with the help of the CB, cdb only common data bus for result and the third one is the right right result finish execution write on common data bus to all awaiting units so you just place the data whatever your that uh, adders and the multipliers perform the operation that will be placed on the common data bus so that all awaiting units can take the data and mark reservation stations available whenever you finish your work uh, we have to be mark reservation stations available you can't keep it as busy it mark it as available so one thing you have to remember that normal bus is only data plus destination means it is going go to bus okay bus will take in the result go to bus and what about the common data bus common data bus contains the data plus source it's not at complete destination still it is waiting for the source to send again it is going to perform some operation so whatever the data that is present on the common data bus it still has to be execute something okay come from the bus it is still waiting for come from the bus so this is about the introduction part of the thomas law's algorithm in the next video i'll explain thomas law algorithm with an example thank you